You're listening to Combat Radio with Ethan Dettenmeyer, right here on LA Talk Radio. Real privilege for us. And the first thing I want to say, I mean, to start the conversation off is, what's it like just being so fucking awesome, man? What's it like? I mean, do you ever wake up and go, God, I'm awesome today? <laughs> no, never have. Never no, have. Come on, bro. You, know, you have, but I never have. Yeah, I say that too. I said that this morning. I woke up and I'm like, God, I'm feeling even more awesome than I usually am. I mean, there's even more awesomeness in my vibe today than there is typical awesomeness. You know, it's funny because like so many of these guys that we know, uh, Gerald Akamura is another one. Yeah, Gerald. Yeah, he's a great guy too. Yeah, yeah. You guys all come across as like these total bad asses, but you're in a room with them. Like, I love having dinner with Gerald. Uh-huh. And I'm like, and I remember asking him once, I said, you know, he worked a normal job as like a supervisor at Boeing or something. Right, right, yeah. And I go, what's it like when you call someone into their your office? Because he's a guy, he's a very recognizable face. He's been in everything from G.I. Joe to Big Trouble in Little China to, hunt, you know, Blade, Shaved Head, Fu Manchu, you know, and he's always screwing people up, you know, with Kung Fu. And, and, I, and he goes to me, he goes, well, if you're called into my office, man, you're in deep shit. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> but the funny thing about it is all you guys, it, despite the reputation of, you know, the Al Leon death, no, the death reel and all these great <laughs> scenes where you've messed people up or, you know, you know, you also got an award for henching, best henchman. Yeah, I, I heard that. Yeah, somebody <laughs> told me that. Yeah, yeah. You know, you see all this stuff, and it's like... Henching, is that what it's called? <laughs> and isn't that hilarious? <laughs> you know, I think I think we have you to thank, Al, for inc- creating a new award category, uh, which is, you know, hench man, you know, et cetera. Like, uh, you know, best in henching, best hench... I mean, that didn't exist before you, you know, did, you know... Oh, really? I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, it's funny, because all you guys are so nice and so down-to-earth. It's like, I... Whenever I have the privilege of, of, of being around some of you guys, I can't believe, probably in all of Hollywood, how, how kind most of you guys oh, you know, are. They're, they're the two guys you named are great guys. Yeah, I worked, yeah. With, I worked with them a lot, quite a bit, yeah. But it's also, there's just because I've done a lot of sword play and stuff like that, you really are dependent on the people that you're working on to right. look after you. So it's about a relationship, because if you get it wrong in one of those scenes... You go to you go to hospital, we, so you, you you've got to be able to trust each other and have a, a good relationship. It's it's one of the basic tenets of we, any of this kind of action. Work. We got to give props to James Lou for he was also the fight coordinator on that to let you pick him up and throw him through a plate glass window. Most people have their ego attached. Like, <laughs> no, I want to look good. I want to make sure I got a lot of good camera time. Well, he looked and good he, going he, through the window. He did look good. He did look good when you threw him through. First, you put someone's head into the like the the, the vice between the wall and the you know the, the, gutter, the stable yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then he goes, in, you know, just one of those moments where. But he's got such a sense of humor about that, and he will put himself. He'll make himself at risk to. To kind of look bad if it, if it's good for the film, and you you told me that what was it yesterday or the day before you were up at John Carpenter's with Jeff Amata. Yeah, yes, I was. Yeah, it was about two months ago. Yeah, Carpenter is a great guy. Great he guy. loves you, man. Have you? Is there a John Carpenter movie you haven't done? Yeah, there is. It's, uh, there's quite. I only did, Halloween. I think, I okay, did, that's the only one. Yeah, what? yeah. Halloween was great. Yeah, that was before I knew him. <laughs> you know, but no, no. I worked. I think like three films with him. Yeah, yeah. He loves you, man. But he's got a great sense of character and faces, and honestly. From what I know of him, you've got to have personality because it's a simple, he's got a plan of action and a set, and that's that, and he's counting on you to do something. Well, all I can say is he's a great person, you know, yeah. and that's what I really like about him, yeah. We were talking about how he steps outside, He's out. he lives outside of the Hollywood machine, and you and I were kind of contributing, like, we don't really, we don't have the what it takes to kind of hang in sort of the neoplasticity of, or plastic world of Hollywood, per se. It's like, we're more of like, our friends may some of them be famous, but we hang out with the people we like character-wise first, and he's one of those guys. Carpenter's not. I'm not going to the CAA awards party or et cetera. Yeah, no, he's a great uh, person, real person. That's what I really like about him, you yeah. know. Because yeah, Hollywood is to me, it's weird, it's strange, you yeah. know. But but yeah, a lot of people I don't deal with, and 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 I've I've walked off of movies before, you know. And people say you can't do that, and I say you watch me, and you know everybody says well you're gonna get sued, but you know what? I've never seen one try to sue me yet. Did someone actually try to stop you from walking off a movie set? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Man, I mean, I've been working on it, and I said, you know, this movie doesn't make any sense, you know? And then I I said, you know what, I don't want to work on this thing anymore. And I would leave, you know? So, (laughs) and then, of course, nobody really likes that, you know? I mean, I never meant to do it, but you work on some things, and I'm saying, how in the world did they ever get this movie made, you know? And so that that always bothered me. When something goes really bad, you know, then then I say, I got to go, and I will go. You know, it's interesting. I was watching... um, 
on the death reel of you. They've got you, you know, when you're fighting Mel Gibson and Lethal Weapon, but they've also got that moment in Die Hard that you probably ad-libbed, I'm guessing, where you hold up to the SWATs are getting ready to break in the lobby, and you and another buddy of ours, Dennis Hayden. Yeah, he's a great guy. He's oh, great love guy. him. He's yeah. on the show all the time. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah, no, he's a great guy. Yeah, you, yeah. He's the guy that looks like Huey Lewis. Yeah, he wears a security guard uniform, but he's the terror. So you guys have to hold him off, and you, you, you four it up right at, like, the candy shop stand. And you decide to go into the Nestle Crunch and stuff and the Mars bars. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. Um, that's when I was watching that last night on American Movie Classic. I was saying, you know, our next combat radio contest for charity has got to be a paintball game in a skyscraper where it's the winner gets to paintball it out with the terrorists from Die Hard. <laughs> you know, and you guys get to relive it like on a three-story skyscraper set. But it's interesting. Was that one of the movies? Do you sit there and go, Die Hard? I just don't get it, John McTiernan. I don't, I don't, I don't see this working. Or you knew right away that was going to be a movie that well, worked. Well, well, you know, again, like I said, you know, you, you work on a film, and that that was a film that that they kept us on. I was supposed to go do, uh, I think it's Rambo Three. Yeah. But Die Hard was paying me, and so they wouldn't let me leave. Mm -hmm. And yet they weren't working us, you know. But but since they're paying you, you can't go anywhere, mm -hmm. you know. And so I didn't. I couldn't go to fight uh, Stallone, which I wanted to do. You <laughs> I know? bet you wanted to do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You see, he's another great guy that would have. Would, I was supposed to work on another film. Uh, uh, was it a Stallone film? Yeah, another Stallone film, uh, Cobra. Oh yeah, right. And then the Asians got on me. They said we don't want a negative image Asian there. So the Asians cut me out. So that was so screwed up. Yeah. Lou had said, I think it actually it may have even been Gerald Ackermore said that was the problem with Big Trouble is that there was even talk of a sequel at one point, but the Asian community was like, this movie you know, portrays us in a negative life. And Carpenter went to you guys and said, what am I doing wrong? He, and, he's not doing anything wrong. The, see, the Asians don't back the Asians. That's what's bad. When you talk about the movie business, the Asians are never there. Mm -hmm. They aren't, you know? So that's that's what you know. I, I never turn to the Asians for any type of support, right? Because they're not, they're never, they've never been there. Because you're working and they're not, so there's some resentment. Uh, I was talking to uh, James Hong once, and uh, Hong is another buddy. He's in, he plays Lo Pan and Big Trouble, but he's in Blade Runner, everything, hundreds of like you. He's been doing movies since the dawn of time. <laughs> no, no, how do you guys stay? He's been around forever. Yeah. I haven't been around that long. You know, it's funny because he came to my office when I was at Warner Brothers, and he had a sword from Wayne's World Two where he fought Wayne with it. Oh, and he's uh -huh. like, "What should I do with this?" And I'm like, "You should auction that off for charity, man." He's like, "I got a warehouse full of this. I don't know what to do with it." You know, I should try and do my James Hong impression. Right? <laughs> and he signed a thing. He did the voice of one of the Disney characters in Mulan, and he signed a thing for Sean. But we were talking, and he goes. He goes, I go, what are you most proud of? What's the best moment, James? He goes, you know what I'm most proud of is on Big Trouble in Little China with me and Kurt Russell. And I'm in, I'm in the old makeup, the old Lopan makeup, and Kurt Russell's tied up, and I talk to him about the girl, and I see on the monitor his friends are trying to break in, and I say, you see this shit? This shit pisses me off to no end. He goes, I ad-libbed that line. <laughs> and he's like, and he was so proud of it. He's like, and I said, you know, that, that line makes the scene. I mean, I'd be proud of that, too. He's like, this shit, it pisses me off to no end. You know, and I was like, he was like, this is classic moments where I'm like standing at Warner Brothers going, this is my life. This is my, this is the kind of thing we discuss at work. It's like, you never, you know, you never work a day in your life in entertainment when it's going good for you. How did you get into movies in the first place? I, I was a grip. I was a grip behind camera for like three years, had no intention of getting in front of camera, and then what happened was I end up doing a low budget movie, and the director goes, "Can you teach these girls any martial arts?" I said, "I can teach them anything, you know." So, so the the director says, "Well, can you teach these girls four girls?" I say, "I can teach them." So I taught these girls a little bit, a bit of martial arts thing for a, I think a wrestling thing that was going on, and so after I taught them, the director said, "Get up there with them." And yeah. that's how I ended up, yeah, in front of camera. And yeah. after that, I, I, I ended up in front of camera, yeah. You've got to look, just speaking from an industry standpoint, that I don't see you working on a grip as a grip on a set for very long. I'm surprised it took three years before someone said, you know, you need to get in here. We need to kill you off in this scene, or you need to, <laughs> you need to karate this door down. I mean, you just have such a – I mean, and, and that's what you're known for now. I mean, I remember when Gerald Okamura was doing his uh, – his conventions, the Dragon Con for pediatric AIDS, are one of his great noble causes. The guy's always doing something to help people. Um, you know, he said, he pointed you out and said, "You can't get close to Al at these conventions because the fans mob him. The guy's just—he's so recognizable. His work is so admired. You're not going to be able to get close to him. So I'm going to try to introduce you guys. This is years ago, probably ten years." <laughs> You're listening to Combat Radio with Ethan Dettenmeyer, right here on L.A. Talk Radio. 